Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, welcome to this last day in the book of Judges. Now, some of you are thinking, Pastor, uh, I thought we had two days left. There's still two days. There are, uh, but I decided uh, to do something special for tomorrow. And so we're actually going to end the month out um, by looking at the crucifixion and the resurrection. And so today, kind of the reason behind that, number one, uh, for everyone as of this recording, Easter, Resurrection Sunday is this Sunday. Uh, but then also um, Judges chapter 19, 20, and 21, they all kind of just really go together. And um, there's a, some crazy situations and stories excuse me, as we enter Judges 19, 20, 21. And so I wanted to kind of keep that together and give a synopsis and a challenge. And then tomorrow we're going to really just dive into the greatest story of all time, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so tomorrow's going to be a great day. Uh, maybe you have someone that you've been trying to share the gospel with, uh, telling them what is the gospel or who Jesus is. I would encourage you tomorrow, push it out to them. And I I think it'll be a huge help and an encouragement. All right. Well, Judges chapter 19, 20, and 21. As you come to these passages, uh, if, if someone were to read through these passages, these three chapters, you would actually find yourself in some of the most disturbing and sad chapters of the entire book of Judges. And we've already gone through a lot of crazy things. But here's what takes place in Judges chapter 19. Uh, through 21. It all begins, Judges 19, verse number one, we read these words, and it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite staying in the remote mountains of Ephraim. And he took for himself a concubine who was from Bethlehem in Judah. But his concubine played the harlot against him and went away from him to her father's house at Bethlehem in Judah and was there four whole months. Then her husband arose and went after her to speak kindly to her and bring her back, having his servant and a couple of donkeys with him. So she uh, brought him into her father's house. And when the father of the young man, the young woman saw him, her daughter's husband, he was glad to meet him. Now his father-in-law, the young woman's father, detained him and he stayed with him three days. So they ate and drank and lodged there. As the story would go on, they'll stay there for a few days uh, with the, the concubine's father. And at the end of those days, the father-in-law convinces him uh, to stay longer. So they do. This happens a couple of times until finally one afternoon, the Levite and uh, his wife, they just pack up and they head out. As they're traveling, it's starting to get late and they turn into a town of Gibeah. Uh, which belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. They turn in there for finding a place to stay. And you pick up in verse number 15, we read about this. They turned aside there to go into in and lodge in Gibeah. And when they went in, he sat down in the open square of the city, but no one would take them into his house to spend the night. It was then that an old man came from his work in the field at evening, who was uh, from the mountains of Ephraim. He was staying in Gibeah, whereas the men of the place were Benjamites, Benjamite, or excuse me, Benjamites. And when he, this man coming in from work, raised his eyes, he saw the traveler in the open square of the city. And the old man said, where are you going? Where do you come from? And he said, we are passing from Bethlehem and Judah toward the remote mountains of Ephraim. I am from there, and I went to Bethlehem, Judah, and now I'm going uh, to the house of the Lord, but there is no one who will take me in. And although we have straw uh, for our donkeys and bread, wine for myself, we, uh, he says there's nowhere to stay. And the old man basically says to him, well, peace be with you, but I want to encourage you, don't stay in the street, come stay with me. You will be my responsibility, he says, don't stay in the streets. So he brings him into his house. And in verse number 22, down through the end of the chapter, uh, here's what we find taking place. As the night goes later, 
the men of Gibeah come and they begin to pound on the door of this man's house where the guests, this Levite and his wife, the concubine, were staying. And they begin saying, give us the men out of the house that we can, that we can have physical relationships with them. And the owner of the house goes out and he says, no, don't do that. And, and then the most mind-blowing thing takes place. He says, take my daughter, <laughs> have her instead do what you will. And the men say, no, we want the, the man. And then the Levite takes his concubine and he gives her out to them. And the story goes that they, they just ravaged her all they, through the night. They abuse her through the night. She's finally set free, set free. She comes back to the house and she dies on the porch. And the Levite then, the Bible tells us that he takes her dead body and he cuts it up into 12 pieces and sends it to all the tribes of Israel. And people are hearing the story and he sends it to them and is like, consider the state of where we are at. And just, I mean, it's just a mind blowing story. I'm not going to read through it just for the sake of time. And while the children of Israel, the other tribes hear about this, they go to war against the Benjamites. They kill all of the people off. And then they say, we don't want a tribe that's left alone. And so then they give wives to the, the men that are still living from the Benjamites. And it's just, it's just this whole ordeal that is just an absolute atrocious wreck. And when you look at the whole situation, you, you, you have to wonder, okay, we have to wonder this. How could God's people, I mean, these are people who claim to follow God. How can they stoop so low? I mean, how did they get to this place? How could they allow, allow themselves going from following Jehovah God and seeing victory after victory after victory into the time of the judges where they're subjugated and then relieved and released by a judge and set free and they follow God and then they're oppressed again and then they're set free by a judge again and they keep seeing God show up. How could they go from the place of victory and the place of judges to this place of just disgusting actions. I think if we were to be honest, we would realize that they came to this place because of pursuing sin. They were engaged in and continually involved in horrible, sinful lifestyles, idolatry, allowing sin to stay in their lives. And here's what the book of wisdom says about sin. He that covers sins will not prosper. There is never, there is never victory in sin. And what did they do? They avoided repentance. They kept waiting until things got completely at a horrific situation and then they would get right with God. It was almost like they treated like God, they treated God like a genie, right? Like I'm in this troubling situation. So here's the genie in the bottle. If I rub the lamp, then hopefully he comes out and he can relieve me in this situation. They were not, they were not in love with the God that had delivered them. They were not pursuing him. They wanted nothing to do with him. They were self-reliant like Samson showed us. They were driven by their own concerns and their own conceit, their own pride. They, like the Levites that we read about yesterday, or the, the uh, um, Danites like we read about yesterday, they were treating their religion as trinkets. And here's what the scripture tells us at the end of verse number, uh, or verse number 20. 25 at the end of chapter number 21. Here's the description of the people of Israel, the people who followed God during this time. In those days, there was no king in Israel and everyone did, that, did what was right in his own eyes. You see what they were doing is they were defining, they were defining what was right. They weren't asking God. They were saying, we define truth. Hmm. Does that remind you of anything? 
Boy, I think if you looked at a lot of modern day Christian beliefs, there are a lot of people that have the mindset of we define truth. My friend, I wanna encourage you today as we wrap up the book of Judges, truth has already been settled. God's word is truth. Jesus said that in John 17, Lord, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word. Your word is truth. My friend, I wanna encourage you as we finish out the book of Judges, I want to encourage and challenge you Don't build your life on what you say truth is. Build your life on what God says truth is. And God says truth is like, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things of life will be added to you. Uh, The truth is put God first and God will meet the needs of your life. The truth is love God, love people, and watch God bless and help your life. The truth is trials come in life, but as we lean into God, we find comfort and grace from God. You see, there are so many principles and truths that you and I need to build our lives upon, and may we never be guilty, may we never be guilty of doing that which was right, that which is right in my own eyes. I don't define truth. Truth is not relative. No, God's truth is the only truth that will stand. So I hope our our, our study through the book of Judges has been a help to you. And I hope today maybe you'd make the decision, Lord, help me to build my life upon your truth, not anything else. Tomorrow, we have a special episode of Strength for the Day. Looking forward to diving in to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow.